reaction to the, uh, to the um, events. But uh, that response has a time course. It, it appears, I mean, if you read this graph and interpret it, what it means is that the real interesting time period is about one or two hours. That means something like the um, moment for a global consciousness is an hour or two long uh, in, in, in some sense. There's interesting questions about what's happening at the beginning. We think this may mean um, that we're in this uh, jog at the beginning of the graph may mean that the correlation, the co covariance measure lags the um, net network variance measure. But we've got a lot more work to do. This is a complicated slide. We do a weighted regression, which you can see in the green straight line in both graphs. It's uh, significant. And what this is, means is that the uh, measures, which are driven by this uh, a correlation between our pairs, pairs of REGs, is stronger when the pairs are close to each other than it is when they're far apart. So we actually have a distance uh, uh, indication. This is just a picture of that. The, uh, on the left here, we have a short, relatively short distance compared with a long distance. Another way to look at the same data, the blue curves uh, show the data in each of those two measures for pair separations less than 8,000 kilometers and the red data for uh, pair separations greater than 8,000 kilometers. Very interesting and to me surprising because my intuition going in was that we had a truly non-local phenomenon. So we can easily or relatively easily categorize a lot of the events into things like terror, or political events, natural disasters, and so on. Uh, we collapse this to a smaller set, which is, makes it easier to read. What's shown here is uh, a, a group uh, terror events and partisan events where the stimulus to have the same emotions comes from the outside in a sense. And uh, compared with something where the meditation, where the, uh, the stimulus is basically kind of internal. And what we see is that the network variance blue column is much stronger than the um, the, than the re response from the, in the covariance, covariance measure uh, for the, these uh, terror and partisan events. We have a lot more work to do to really understand this, but it, it looks like, um, well, lit literally, that the two different kinds of independent measures are actually responsive to different kinds of things. This is just an analysis of variance showing the same data uh, that there is an interaction between the type of statistic we use and the category that they're in. By, in several different groupings, we see this, that it's, there's a significant outcome. So if there is consciousness driving what our system does, one might ask, what happens if people are awake versus asleep? We might imagine there's a little more tendency while people are awake. What this shows is in the center, um, the, a real 24-hour day compared with days that are, that are minutes longer or minutes shorter there's a pretty uh, impressive spike. It's actually only 16 to one odds, but it's, um, it suggests that there really is a kind of consciousness pressure on the data when people are awake. The, long, there's, the blue curve show a long-term long trend in our data, which is in a way kind of mysterious. Why would this happen? Um, we look for some sort of external correlate and Peter decided to gather all kinds of um, presidential, uh, all kinds of polling data, and looked in particular at the presidential approval ratings, which as you can see in the left-hand graph, even in the raw form, have a fairly similar kind of uh, trend. When we do a simple model to fit the presidential approval data to the, um, to the global consciousness and network variance, it's a very striking fit. No proof of uh, a, a causal result. Okay, this is my last uh, slide. There, there is um, in, in, in the last uh, 10 years or nine years, some 600 earthquakes in the world or 700 uh, with Richter magnitude seven or greater. In other words, damaging quakes. About um, 100 of those have been on land where they matter to people and the rest are in the ocean. So this graph shows 
a strong pattern when they're on the land and not much uh, of a pattern at all when these quakes occur in the ocean. What's perhaps uh, more interesting in a certain sense, and again, a temporal structural kind of thing, uh, this central portion is magnified here and actually separated into two independent subsets, both of which show the same pattern. And that pattern uh, begins about eight hours before uh, the uh, minimum point, uh, which is at the time of the quake. So, okay, uh, last point. Um, was, oh, I, this is the button. <laughs> The fact that only where the, the only the quakes which affect people uh, show any pattern suggests, I think, strongly that consciousness definitely is involved. Lots of other things do. There's even a suggestion of premonition, but more work to do to to discover where there's any reality to that. Thank you very much. This is the uh, part of the group who help. <laughs> Thank you, Roger. I just wanted to ask, because I have a son who lives in Los Angeles, could you please call me if, that, if you <laughs> see that happening? One of the uh, uh, suggestions that uh, the data give is that we could, in principle, predict things. The trouble is that if we see a, a strange uh, change in the data, um, we don't know much more than that the data are responding to something. We don't know where, whether it's Los Angeles or maybe China. And uh, we don't know when exactly it will be either. But it's a good thought. Roger, wonderful update and beautiful data. Um, question about this, this possible distance effect. Um, if you, for example, look at the earthquake data, you know, earthquakes are, are very physically localized. And you literally, because you've got a span all around the world, right. you have you have eggs or REGs that are quite some distance from a given quake. If you plot the data as a function of distance from a quake, averaging over all the quakes, for particularly obviously the ones that are on land, is there a distance effect? There is a small distance effect, but the one that we know most about has to do with the distance between pairs of REGs. Our pair, the average pair correlation is greater for uh, REGs that are close to each other. We do have also already a suggestion some, uh, of an answer to your question, and it is positive. There is a drop-off of effect uh, with, regard, with regard to what appears to be the focal point of the event. Yes. There's one. Is it possible to have a dedicated reg for a specific area? And somehow, in the intentionality says, however you level or think of intentionality, you, Reg, will only ever respond to anything from that specific spot or event style, or like an earthquake, and nothing else from the intentions you want to put on this. Do you think that's conceptually possible? It, uh, given the nature of the meeting and the, uh, the content of the talks we've been listening to, I'm inclined to say anything is possible. <laughs> but uh, more seriously, I, I think the, in the nature of the question that we ask is very important. And basically, that's what you're talking about. If we specify the task, so to speak, or if we task an REG, it's, um, it's, there is some evidence that the REG will uh, be responsive to that tasking. You could. But uh, it wouldn't, we wouldn't be able to use the same uh, you know, material as we have here because we're talking about pairwise correlations. It really is a global uh, response. We don't know how deep that correlation structure goes, but at least the major stuff is driven by inter-REG correlations. And have you done any um, analysis of, as opposed to distance, cultural connection? Like, if, if a culture feels more connected to where an event happens, is their response bigger? I think I can answer in the affirmative. We haven't done very much of that, but once in a while there'll be something, well, for example, we look at political events, which, and more often than not, they're US-based uh, political events. And um, we look, this is usually exploratory, not formal. The formal is always asking about the whole network. But if we look at the local REGs uh, for, to that, uh, let's say the US, 
And if we limit 